Hello guys, Dan here from Dan's Tech, and in today's video guys, we're going to be having a look at a water cooling product from Arctic. Now this is uh, the, the Accelero Hybrid 3-140. This is an all-in-one liquid uh, cooling unit uh, for your GPU. Now there isn't many solutions out there for graphics cards, but yeah, this is an, uh, an AIO, that's the one, that's what I was looking for. Yeah, an AIO for your GPU. But one thing special about this cooler is that it is liquid, you know, it is a liquid cooler, but one thing you get additionally is a VRM heatsink and also an 80 mil fan to kind of strap on that heatsink as well. So, you know, so you're actually cooling your VRMs actively. One thing with, um, you know, uh, graphic cards that one real reason that many liquid coolers for GPUs doesn't exist is because, um, you know, you have still got to cool RAM chips and also VRMs. VRMs do typically get, you know, quite hot. And with, you know, just strapping a, you know, a liquid cooler on a, on a GPU core, that's not really cooling the GPU very effectively. But, um, you know, with this product, you know, you, we do get a VRM heatsink. And if anything, it's going to be pretty interesting to see what this is going to perform like. And also, you, you know, to kind of see what temperatures are like on the VRMs and also the RAM chips. And hey guys, let's kind of get into the video. And yeah, without further ado, let's kind of check out uh, this uh, um, AIO from Arctic. So getting right into the review, first up for a quick unboxing, inside the box on top we found two instruction manuals, one focusing on the assembly of the product and another focusing on controlling fan curves within the MSI Afterburner overclocking software, pretty sure some of you guys should be familiar with that. And under these we found the metal back heatsink with um, yeah, also a separate VRM heatsink with all the appropriate mounting hardware including um, yeah, two of uh, Arctic's own fans, one of them being an 18mm VRM fan and the other being a 140mm fan attached to the radiator. Now included also in the box is also a small syringe of Arctic's own best thermal paste, uh, this is the uh, MX4. To me it's a very good thermal paste and this is the best that um, you know, Arctic do sell. And it will do many applications since the syringe is quite large. And I will say great work on Arctic cooling for giving us this much to work with. Now just a note on the thermal pads on both of the uh, metal heat sinks, these are pre-applied, yeah thermal pads are pre-applied to the heat sinks so there's no need to cut your own thermal pads which is always good. Now onto the main unit itself, the cooler is comprised of what looks to be a static pressure 140mm fan attached to a 140mm radiator. With flexible tubing going all the way to the other end, this is um, yeah, this is very good that you know the tubing is flexible. And uh, yeah, on the other end, you will find a pump and also a copper coal plate combo with Arctic branding on the plastic housing. Now, from inspecting the unit, the radiator is made from Acertec. These are the same guys who make uh, your all of the uh, well, not all of the uh, water coolers, but many of the water coolers that Corsair have sold in past years, like the H70 and also the H90 Hadro liquid CPU coolers. Now moving on to the installation, I've only ever installed an aftermarket GPU cooler once and this was one of Arctic's own air coolers, the Accelero Extreme IV or 4. Now back to this cooler, the installation in general was pretty damn easy compared to say the Extreme 4 which had a lot of steps and yeah, there was a potential for a lot of error and even some risk. Now intentionally not going into much detail, the first thing you've got to do is to remove your existing graphics card cooler by removing all the screws on the back and also some from the side of your card if needed. Now just note, when taking off the cooler for your card, you shouldn't need to remove any of the screws on the front as these screws should remove the housing um, so you can gain access to clean your fans. Now you may also need to remove say two or three screws from the side where say your video out ports are. Now once you've done this, you'll want to apply some thermal paste to the GPU core once you remove the existing stuff and yeah, you'll only need a small amount compared to the amount that you usually spread on a CPU. Now next you'll want to screw in the uh, backside heatsink and also the pump unit to the card at the same time with the screws, washers and also springs included with the product. Now this can be a little bit tricky and was even more tricky for me to film this, however once you've done this, you want to mount the smaller VRM heatsink. Now my card is not a reference Nvidia card, but a, a you know an MSI Twin Frozer variant of the GTX 770. So in my case, unfortunately, there's no possible way for me to mount the VRMs that uh, you know did come pre-cut in this kit. However, what I did do is put the metal heatsink back onto the uh, card that MSI did, you know, actually fit onto the card, which is intended to cool the VRMs and RAM chips. Was a shame about that, but um, you know that's kind of how it's going to be if you do have a card that isn't a reference card, which to be honest should be. Um, the majority of you out there. Now after this, the last thing to do is to screw the radiator and fan onto the back or the front of your case, now, which in my case is kind of a step that I can skip as a cat I use a, you know, a, a normal kind of computer case and since I'm using a test bench, I did just blue tack the radiator onto my desk to keep it secure. Now by default, the fan on the radiator is uh, set to blow air out of the case 
And this naturally does make sense as, um, you, you know, by doing this, typically case temperature will be lower, but may impact performance of the GPU a little bit. But, uh, you know, typically as this cooler is going to nearly half your GPU's operating temperature, you can definitely see why Arctic went with this route. Now onto the performance, the water cooler managed to keep my uh, MSI GTX 770 at 53 degrees while having a one hour gaming session on Battlefield 4 online. Now comparing this to the average temperatures I was getting with the stock MSI Twin Frozen 4 cooler, the GPU was exactly 25 degrees cooler thanks to this water cooler. And just because I could, I did go into the BIOS later on to speed up the fan profile and um, yeah, it did bring the cooler down to an additional um, well, they did bring it down an, an additional 6 degrees to 47 degrees. Now, this is pretty damn impressive comparing the stock cooler was giving temps of 78 degrees. And to be honest, um, yeah, this cooler wasn't even that loud, even running at the maximum uh, fan speed on the radiator. Now, I will say it is definitely a lot quieter than the, um, yeah, than the stock MSI cooler when you're running the radiator um, uh, speed um, on this uh, Arctic cooler at stock. So yeah, very good temperatures, and it is, it, it is indeed a lot quieter than the stock MSI card. Now, also the VRM and also the RAM temps, I wasn't able to give any figures on this as I don't own a temperature gun. However, the back metal heatsink that MSI provided with the card to keep the VRM and RAM chips cool. This was pretty damn hot when playing the games, but that does mean, uh, you know, heat is being dissipated and sent up to that metal. So what I, um, you know, did, did decide to do in the end is, um, you know, because I'm using the Dimmest Tech test bench, I was able to use the freestanding Noctua 120 mil fan um, that I had mounted on here to blow a cooler onto the graphic card's PCB. And by doing this, I was pretty confident that the GPU and other component areas, apart from the core, was very well, um, you know, in safe operating temperatures. Now to conclude on the Arctic Accelero Hybrid 340, this uh, device is pretty damn good and it does bring your, you know, your GPU cores down a lot. Very, um, you know, it does bring them down a lot the more what I thought would have been possible. And to be honest, it does stay very, very quiet. The only downside with this is that it is a little bit expensive, but to be honest, I think when you think of the uh, price of this compared to say what's a, a Corsair Hitch 90 liquid cooler, it's priced that. Considering you're getting all the mounting hardware to install this onto a GPU, I think it's definitely worth it. And if you are just wanting to you know buy this product to make your GPU really quiet or to buy it to get some you know extra overclocking performance I think it is definitely worth it if you are willing to put up with um, a little bit tricky or of an installation but in general it is a product that I would recommend and um, yeah you know for them two reasons go grab it and uh, I think you'd be pretty damn impressed anyway guys thanks for watching please feel free to like comment and also subscribe and yeah I'll see you guys in my next video goodbye